there everybody welcome back to the lgl officially unofficial for our fourth and final game of the day once again i'm going to be joined by echo ko and rmc for the cast gentlemen this one Fukuoka Softbank Hawks Gaming versus V3. We had our previous matchup between second and first place, ended in 22 minutes. In my opinion, not particularly entertaining. RMC, do you think we're going to have something a little bit more funky this time around? I'm praying. I'm really praying we do middle <laughs> card because the last time we cast them, the answer was no. Yeah. Uh, but this time, I think, why not? If you are Hawks and V3, you literally have nothing to lose at this point. And both these teams <laughs> desperately need a hero. Okay, not, not fair to Hawks. I think Dasher has been the hero for Hawks. Yeah. But I think they need somebody else to step up so it's not just 1v5ing uh, for most of their games. And for V3, they desperately need a hero. No one yeah. really has stepped up. We've said Washidai at times has done well. Ayugo has stepped up at times as well. But they need a consistent carry and to step up at least for the entire game, not just for one fight or one play. And I mean, like, you can see the sort of stats on your screen right now. Uh, that is not what I would expect from a mid laner who is currently sat in seventh place from Dasher. He has been honestly phenomenal this split um, and has kind of looked out of mm -hmm. place in terms of where his team is currently sitting. Echo Keo, RMC briefly touched on Washidai being a potential avenue for V3 to play through. And I think that they really do need that hero. They need that one player to play around because for the first nine games of the split, they haven't really had one. Yeah, absolutely right. And I think we were also saying that. I believe he was the one on the Camille as well, who was, you know, he was, yeah. he was popping off with that pick and he was looking pretty... Mm -hmm. Looking pretty good, right? And I mean, yeah, they they really need here. And like, honestly, I think RMC really already put it best. Like, they have nothing to lose, right? If especially V three, you're what zero and nine. It's like you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do to get the win. You, you gotta like, you you gotta get a dub <laughs> at some point. Your season exactly. needs to get started, and this game <laughs> is gonna get started in draft. Gentlemen, take it away. All right, thank you so much, Middle Let's 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 get into this thing, man. V three, I'm. I'm, I'm praying for him, bro. They got they got to get a win sometime, right? Hopefully, that's going to be today. What, what what kind of picks does V3 need to get out here if they want to get this win, Norm? See, what do you think? Carry picks. Picks that can actually do something, uh, you know, for the team here. And, you know, everybody else is, like, starting with their AD carries. I, I think for these two teams, the AD carry really isn't the biggest thing for you. For mm -hmm. Hawks, I think... It's going to be, yeah, I was going to say, it's going to be the jungle because Blank has been sort of the trigger for a lot of their action. Hasn't always worked out, but I do like this Hecarim first pick. And for V3 here, I mean, at, at this point, I think you answer with maybe like support jungle or support uh, or AD carry jungle here. And if you're going to pick an AD carry, I mean, dress code has looked too, too bad, especially, you know, playing up against Marble here. If you want to pick that Jinx, you know, for that hyper carry, that's viable. But honestly, the Jin for dress code has actually looked probably one of his better picks. Ooh, you know, they are going to opt for the Jinx coming out here. So yeah, ADC jungler coming out. No real surprise there. Hecarim once again being picked. We've just seen so damn much of him. I mean, he's just such an enabler, so really no surprise there. And the Ophelios once again... Are yeah. you sure we're not watching <laughs> Burning Core going up against DFM right now? <laughs> Uh, I hope that the games will be as well executed as that one here. Uh, but we do see the rise come through from Dasher. And I do like this pick. We've not actually gotten to see Dasher on the rise. But to me, rise is such a good carry in the current meta. We're seeing a lot of tank rise, but you can build rise damage as well. If you feel like you need that magic damage, you feel like you need that carry. And even if not, we've seen how tanky the rise has been here. So... For the Hawks, I like what I'm seeing from draft and for V3 here. Yeah, I was going to say you counter the mid, I think, because you're R3 at this point and you're just matching blow for blow. We might start seeing the support pools pinched a little bit or even the top lane pools, especially if we're looking for the side of the Hawks, because we mentioned that Washidai can be a potential carry for this team. And maybe you just want to deny that possibility from coming through. Mm, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can really see that they're really kind of waiting it out, right? No really picks coming out for them just yet. Really taking their time on this band. They really got to think hard about this one. They are going to bench the Kench, okay. however, or getting them out of here. I mean, no one's uh, no surprised here, to be honest, right? You got to take it off the board. Yeah, and the other band I want to see come through from V3 here is actually a Braum mm. band, and they oh. will get first pick. So I want to see Braum band, Thresh pick up, and then you just deny away all the safe pairings for okay. Marvel oh. here. You can look to punish that. Oh, ah. no Thresh pick up. They heard you, bro. They heard you, dude. Okay. 
That's fine, that's fine. And what pairing is there left for the Aphelios here? It's got to be something aggressive after this point, or maybe an Enchanter, but Reina and Heto, both these supports haven't played too many supports. I think Reina's played one game of Yumi. Um, Yumi, Aphelios is not a good bot lane to try and lane with. Late game, it's good, and Yumi pairs well with the Hecarim here, but uh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, Braum's still on the table. They didn't get that. Oh, might just be picked up here in D-Last Band. Going to be coming out here from the Ox. Let's see what they decide to take off the table here. And then we'll have a bit of a better idea as to what to expect. Maybe just what's he really taking the time. There we go. Oh, oh uh, okay. Camille A is going to be taken out. So that will not be coming out from Washi Down anytime soon. Yeah, they heard you as well, Echo okay. <laughs> You know, they, they know that, hey, the Camille was something that Washi Day performed well in. Maybe not in lane in a counter matchup, but you know, later on in the game as well, had a lot of impact. Now, 4v3 here, they've got a lot of zone control. They've got skill with the Vigar, the Jinx already, and it looks like they're going to try and round out their composition with a little bit of engage here uh, with the Rakan. Okay, no, they've moved away for now. More scaling for the side of v3. You know what? I don't blame them. Uh, the Hawks, the slowest team in the league. So if you pick late, you know, that's a pretty good chance you're going to get there. <laughs> exactly. Going to go ahead and grab themselves Nat and Gwen, and now we're going to see the response here from v Hawks, you feel like they're picking the top right off the back? Who do you think they're grabbing? Doesn't matter. I mean, they're picking support in top no matter what here. Mm. So um, we're going to get to see both. For Graves, uh, for Kanatsu, Graves is sort of one of the go-to picks. Three games on Graves, three game games oh. on Gwen here. You go Hallbreaker. Do we get to see our first Renata of the LJL here? Oh, I've got to admit, I haven't seen a lot of Renata, so I'm not sure what combo she works best in, but... She sounds OP. Her kit looks really <laughs> strong. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Hovering it, really thinking about it here. Not quite sure if they want to take it. No, they got. Uh, man, we got baited, bro. We got baited, bro. How are they going to do us like that? 0% presence in the first day. Uh, Renata has been enabled in the LJL. I'm honestly very, very surprised. I mean, there's still a chance we see Renata here. Uh, you know, it's actually pretty fun into an Aphelios. Uh, Aphelios sentry gun will actually attack himself. Uh, if you use the ultimate on it, yeah, because it oh, comes as a separate damn. unit and it will trigger his secondary weapon as well. So um, <laughs> uh, fun possibilities, but yeah, I don't think that's what V3 need. They, they do need some sort of engage and Renata, great counter engage, good pick potential, but not so great uh, on the engage here. And with the drops coming in, I think both teams have found exactly what they wanted. V3 hyper late scaling uh, for carry potential multiple lanes and for the Hawks here, They've got the skill with the rise of Felios and Kinatsu on Graves with Hullbreaker in the top lane is going to be incredibly happy just PVEing the entire game. <laughs> you think we're going to be seeing like a like a Evy 2.0 pretty much? He's just going to be chilling up in that top lane, farming it down. I I don't I don't know about compare Kinatsu to Evy because <laughs> can Evy at, at least join the team for you know some <laughs> important fights. I think Kinatsu will be very happy to just not join the team the entire <laughs> game and. Props to Kanatsu. I say that like it's a bad thing, but honestly, it's been a, a pretty good win condition for the Hawks. It hasn't really materialized, but Kanatsu's split push has been one of the most uh, pressuring things about this team. <laughs> mm. I mean, hey, you gotta, you gotta get the dubs where you, you gotta take the dubs where you get them, really. So if that's if that's the move, then uh, that's the move. Looking at looking at the comps itself, though, how do you is is Unica gonna be? More, what do you think Unica is kind of gonna be prioritizing when it comes to the lanes, especially like in early on? It's interesting because when you've got so many scaling lanes, you don't really have a lane that you absolutely want to play th through necessarily or have to yeah. play through. Uh, you don't have like a, a lane that needs to get ahead early. So you can look at all the lanes and all of them are equally viable. That said, I do think the highest percentage plays will probably come from bot or mid lane here. Anytime you go bot when it's not red white, you do have a lot of burst damage to come through. And in the mid lane as well, Vigar is really good setup. Rise takes time to scale. So uh, I think mid bot or just flat out invade the Hecarim because mm -hmm. while Leeson isn't as strong as the Trundle in the 1v1, he's still pretty good at sneaking in there. And even if you don't find the Hecarim, you can steal stuff away from that Hecarim as well. Yeah, definitely. Well, we will get to see what they're planning on doing. Game on. It has begun. Hawks going up against V3 Esports. Can V3 finally get their first dub <laughs> of this entire... They're like, come on, it's got to happen. Eventually, maybe we get to see it go down. Looking at the runes, you know, anything uh, standing out to you here? Anything that we wouldn't expect? Or is it all pretty much just the usual? I think Spellbook for Dasher is a little bit surprising. We are used to seeing, you know, Phase Rush on mm -hmm. the... Uh, 
on the rise there the rare occasional electrocute if you're really looking to dominate lane which would also have surprised me uh summer spellbook feels a little bit defensive here um and i don't know how i feel about that for dasher because <laughs> i feel like for dasher i you're kind of the big damage threat on the team the big carry here and you know if you're if you're running that spell book already it kind of says that maybe you're not so confident uh trying to carry this one listen man he's, he's got to give his teammates a chance to shine too you know he's got to get marble <laughs> you got to give him the spotlight fair. occasionally already a little bit of damage coming out here dress code looking to make a name for himself here he's like this bot lane is going to be belonging to me sooner or later right now he's not scared to push up though yeah, they're just fighting over control uh, for that bush there. If you do manage to get the ward down, it's actually really important, especially mm. into uh, the likes of Rakan or Rel, either of whom can very easily engage out of that bush here. So net neutral. I mean, neither side really uh, managed to secure ward control of that particular bush. Now, Echo, I noticed you're sighing already, you know, when you're talking about V3 <laughs> trying to find your first win. And I'm a little bit worried because... If you're feeling tired already to start the game, <laughs> I don't know how you're gonna last through this one here. <laughs> yeah, I've been listen. I'm a, I'm I'm hope I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. You know, hey, the, the, even the even the AI is like, okay, V3, they got a chance this time around. The little AI blitz, yeah, he, he's got my back. Wow, I like that power spike actually too. Uh, yeah. You can see the early game, you know, kind of favors Hawks a little bit as we kind of expected. You know, with that Graves, uh, with. Yeah, with sort of the way the lanes are going to play out, but V3 yeah. scaling is through the roof here. <laughs> do not and... let it go past 25. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't, please. The last time they played was 37 plus minutes, and uh -oh. the longest match of the league so far of the season belongs to Hawks versus CG. I think it went 49 minutes or 48 what? minutes. So, oh my God. I don't know, man. Fast oh is not Lord. synonymous with the Hawks. <laughs> Gonna have to zero. I tell already a lot of damage coming on with that grand entrance. So right now it's gonna be taken considerably low. But yeah, I mean honestly, it's like you said, right? It's just blank. It's probably just gonna be chilling. Same with Unica, really looking for those openings in the lane. I gotta say, mid lane definitely already looking kind of juicy. You've got Dasher kind of pushed out pretty far there, so maybe we'll see uh, Unica kind of path there into that mid lane. Try and get UGO ahead. That would always be pretty big if you can get the Vagar ahead off the back. But we will definitely have to see. And that top lane is looking good too. Yeah, Unica actually, interesting pathing, skipped over the Wolves here. So uh, with Lee Sin, J Jay Shinz, all these sort of early game junglers here, you do want to get creative with your pathing a little bit to look mm -hmm. for those early ganks. But skipping Wolves and Raptors is kind of a sort, sort of odd one. If you do skip Wolves, you usually are looking for a gank on that bot side very, very quickly. Uh, but your bot lane's not in a good position to do so. Dress Code and Hetel are pushed really far up, and Dasher, unfortunately, uh, did... Kind of recognize that hey i we haven't seen unica in a while i don't feel comfortable i'm over pushed i'm yeah. gonna back and buy an early tier here so unica not able to find anything for it and it's a it's a very minor point but against a hecarim who is a power farmer these sort of suboptimal pathings can come back to bite you especially if hecarim starts to invade you know post six as well uh taking away your camps and being able to tell where you are yeah absolutely right it's gonna be big and dasher man he is sending it far back to grab that vision for team event rising is gonna stun him down and allow ugo to do quite a bit of damage but already <laughs> dasher is hitting like a truck right now ugo is pretty damn low already yeah if you don't land the event horizon as the vigar if you don't put that rise in a baby cage you're gonna lose that trade because <laughs> he's just gonna dance circles around you and he puts out so much more damage now at level six things do change of course with the possibility of a burst damage coming up but you still need to land the poke first and blank this is what i'm talking about you know with that pathing oh, is already invading Lord. here Bank in a bit of a bad spot here. Information oh. inequality has once again <laughs> struck, and first blood will go to Yu-Gi-Oh. The whole entirety of the team, not really, only three members, but they all kind of see the opportunity, <laughs> right? And they move in and just mm -hmm. snatch blank off the board. Yeah, really good movement there. And Hawk should have been aware, hey, you know, Hetel's gone back to base, get ready for the roam. Got a little bit greedy, you know, but they'll be fine. And one thing about V3 is that their early games, a lot of times they have good isolated plays i want to see them continue to snowball this and this Ooh. does not look like snowball <laughs> nope it's, yeah, speaking of isolate unica was in a bit of a bad spot there was able to dash over to ugo though so might just oh. be okay dick cage needs to be careful needs to get out of there now so close oh. the flag, so dasher he knows his limits he knows the numbers my man's a mathematician he knows he gets that and gets it indeed nice 
and I, I can't really call it clean, but nice. <laughs> it was nice. It was nice. It was nice. It was nice. Was nice. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go with that here. And hey, with that, <laughs> things are equaled up, right? We saw Blank overextend immediately after. Unica's like, hold my drink. Watch me do it too, right? <laughs> exact same thing. They're going for Raptors without vision. They're going in blind. And <laughs> just as us praising V3, and this is my problem with V3, right? They, <laughs> they make individual good plays, mm -hmm. and then they can't seem to chain them together. They can't seem to link <laughs> them up. And they need a hero because for Hawks, the fact that, hey, Dasher's getting the kill, to me, that's really good. Dasher is that hero, will be that carry for them. Ayugo got first blood. Can he be that hero for V3? And if so... I think it needs to start in laning. You need to start taking control of this lane, whether it be calling Unico over for help or Heto for some assistance here, whatever it takes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we see the Predator coming out right from the Vigor, so that's already going to allow yeah. him to really lock Dash into that baby cage, right? Put the pacifier in his mouth and be like, hush, hush now. Mid lane belongs <laughs> to me, right? So we're going to have to see if him and you can get something done. But I just, I actually just realized the cleanse actually coming out from Dash, who's kind of expecting that. It's going to be huge to see how he can kind of utilize that to get out of these sticky places. Because we see he clearly, he hits hard. He does a lot of damage. Yeah. And if Yujo isn't careful, he will definitely pay the price. And that's one of the ways to utilize that summoner spell book, right? Teleports yeah. down already. Switch over to the cleanse here. And as long as that cleanse is up, Yu-Gi-Oh will not win that particular trade. Even if you get him in the perfect spot with the event horizon, he's just going to run right through and go gunning for you as well. But for now, you know, it'll take some poke before we, we get to see that happen. And unfortunately, the Echo... Uh, I was going to say, it looks like we might be headed back to, you know, sort of a passive laning phase where everybody's just trying to scale up because everybody's scaling. But I do see Hetzel roaming, and that gives me hope. Yeah, absolutely. Utica as well, setting up, see if you can find something here. But he realizes something might just be going down in this mid lane here. Blank definitely needs to be careful. Uh, not quite going to walk into it slowly, but surely. A little bit of pressure is brewing. Maybe going to see a bit of a scuffle here. Grand oh. Entrance does connect, followed up by the baby oh. cage. Dasher is low. He's not getting out of this one. Unica picks up that kill. Just go with the reset. Does a little bit of damage to Blank, but they get what they were looking for, and they get the hell out of there. Yeah, and they're not going for Herald, interestingly, after this. Maybe they go mm. for Dragon instead. Uh, I, I want to highlight the fact that Dasher had cleanse and didn't insta-cleanse. I think took a little bit too long. The knock-up from Hetzel was uncleansable and that came back to bite a little bit by the time dasher was trying to get through that event horizon it was a little bit too late and good response from hawks v3 go for dragon hawks go for herald normally i'd say herald is the better trade here it gives you that early game power spike the gold's more important but with how these games run a lot of times stacking dragons is probably going to be better in the long run here yeah, I gotta say, nice to see though Kinatsu, right? Actually, and he's not in that top lane. He moved down to try to True. back up his team. Unfortunately, waited a bit too long, wasn't able to get into the fight. And we see just that, yeah, he couldn't cleanse the grand entrance, gets knocked into the cage, gets taken out accordingly. And it's nice to see that uh, the side of V3 doesn't really, they don't greed for anything, right? They get that kill. They're like, hey, we're really only looking to kind of scale up, right? We're looking to take our time with this thing. We're looking to run the clock as long as we can, get what we came for and get out. Yeah, and the fact that Kanatsu roamed out actually is interesting because it doesn't look like he's going for a Hallbreaker. We see Bamp Scepter, we see the Serrated Dirk. This looks like mm. a Graves that actually wants to fight, and I'm not sure if that's going to pan out for them. They've done best when Kanatsu is able to apply that side lane pressure. Speaking of pressure, Harold dropped top and Washide completely chased out from the turret range. Yeah, damn. They straight up told him this <laughs> that your lane is forfeit, bro. You don't get to step a foot here anymore. They did send Kanatsu to that ball lane, like you were saying, though. Won't have that hole breaker. Maybe we see kind of like second item, something like that. Maybe he just wants to prioritize that healing, but we will have to see. Rift Herald shouldn't be able to crash into this tier three unless some kind of miracle. Okay, we'll be taken out. <laughs> but that is that tier one down already. Yeah, and more importantly, V3 found zero answer in the bot side. Utica mm -hmm. was bot side as well, and they were thinking of the dive. And this is why generally we see Hullbreaker Graves, because trying to dive a Hullbreaker Graves is very difficult. He instantly clears the wave here. But even without that, Kinatsu was able to clear the wave, deter any further action. And this is good to see from the Hawks. Good macro play, something that we've been wanting to see more of here. But for the Hawks, the early game hasn't been the problem. The problem is what happens when they start to group up and you know, mm -hmm. considering that we're seeing Kanatsu build damage here, um, it might look like Hawks are trying to change up the play style a little bit, try and short up that particular week. Basically, it sounded to me like Dasher needs to build his own hole breaker. That way, he can just spam ping when someone's too close to him and be like, get away. I need to do my own plays here. 
<laughs> kind of true. I mean, we're not seeing a lot of roams in the mid lane, right? And if yeah. anything, Dasher has been uh, on the receiving end of Unica and Hetel popping by. So, you know, Hellbreaker Rise here. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't sound like the worst thing, Echo. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the pings, man. You can just spam ping and now we do see Nino. Oh, like, uh, the Nino will. Ooh, it gets hit by the event, right? And the Nino works so much damage. Oh. They send everything they got and they take out Dasher. They're looking just for the mental damage at this point. They're like, send everything we got. Make sure this guy knows he doesn't get to play League of Legends today. He plays gray screen simulator. Just saying, Hellbreaker might have helped out some. <laughs> Was all alone. And really good rotation from V3. It's very swift. They move up, they move back right away. They're barely losing minions for it. And they are starting to stack a Yu Gi Oh up as well. It's the, the way that particular fight is set up as well is beautiful because not only is it feeding kills over to Eugeo, but if you notice the way the rocket's always being launched, dress code has a chance to steal and get assists as well. And more importantly, it doesn't cost them anything. Dress code does walk all the way up, but kind of didn't have to at this point. Dress code's probably like halfway down the river, runs right back to the bot lane, and that's why the CS is not going in Marble's uh, advantage, despite the fact that dress code's getting more giving more assistance to the rest mm. of the team yeah yeah no definitely good to see i i like this v3 looking looking sharp today definitely on their stuff do want to get that win and they are definitely on the right path to do so we said that this is more of the team right that needs to kind of they want to scale up they want to play the clock run it down and even now they're looking good even in the early game yeah um good play so far they found a strategy that works and they're just repeating it now the only concern echo is that they're still down go despite being <laughs> despite making all these good you know moves that we're praising these individual catch out plays they're down 1.4k gold and granted a lot of that is off that first turret on the top lane that kanatsu or actually marble and rhina uh managed to get with the help of herald but it is still a gold deficit and we still haven't seen them really team fight against the hawks the hawks have just Pardon me, been just laning separately for the most part um, instead of grouping up. So when the Hawks group up, to me, that's when the fun really starts here. Yeah, and I mean, we do see that kind of gold difference also somewhat reflected in the items, right? Because you see Marble does already have his Mythic, while on the other hand, Dresco doesn't quite have it. But that call is mm -hmm. going to be uh, just depleted in just a minute there with that last minion going down. And then should be able to get it there. That's a little bit of a bad spot. Granted, just get out of there. But like we were saying, right, I got to say Graves, though did grab the eclipse but it's still not looking like he's building that hullbreaker maybe maybe that's the secret sauce maybe that thing that's why things aren't working out for the hawks right now maybe and if you're gonna build that eclipse then i need to find i need to see kanatsu start finding some uh damage in these trades yeah, Unico? Oh, speaking of damage okay. though, very nice of horizon all the chains coming out baby because they hit him with the one two and down goes rhino that's like their main tank off the board blank was taken to half hp dragon still on the board they're looking to send in find even more though a very nice grand entrance dasher will go gold oh, but where you go horizon into the cc wall that's called the choppers and the baby cage because good night you're done but a very nice <laughs> ultimate coming out will take out two of the members there from v3 and overall they will go two for two well echo i did say the fun would start when they actually 5v5 <laughs> and sure enough your chaos reigns with how it plays out and v3 i think started that really really well unica has some killer instincts there to force that particular fight and the way Vyga likes to play is through the rotations of the spells as well so them getting to reset or get that space between kills to reset mm. was absolutely critical because we see one event horizon i believe there's two or three total throughout the duration of this fight but the problem was that sengoku hawks uh not sengoku, oh my god softback hawks pardon me <laughs> got thrown by the name for a second there. uh they have really strong team fight and you can see that once they actually got marble to that fight with the gale force you know combined with kanatsu we said we need to see kanatsu's burst well here it is together they just absolutely wipe all the <laughs> yeah. squishies. That Infernum was beautiful. And honestly, the Infernum was just icing on the cake. They already had that fight won already before that. That was just what happened to pick up all those kills. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, also, got to definitely give props to Heddle there. A very nice dash followed up by the grand entrance, which forced, for, uh, forced, excuse me, Dasher to pop mm. that stopwatch early, put him in a terrible spot. We see the event horizon yeah. go down, followed by the chompers. And it's like, okay. You, you can't oh, actually he can't even cleanse this time around because he has that TP but it would have been like sure you can cleanse out of the chompers can't cleanse your way out of that event horizon though afterwards and he goes down accordingly of course at the end of the day some of the members v3 are a bit too low unfortunately and just do get absolutely decimated by Marvel's ultimate but it's still nice to see.
Ooh, CJ here. Yeah, definitely have to be careful. Blank gonna opt to go ahead and fall back. Doesn't quite want to take that fight. Probably for the best there. Just gonna grab that tier one. Back off. Kinatsu once again. That split push menace. Even without the hole breaker, he's still kind of. He's got. He's got his job. He's not in unemployment just yet. But Dasher might just be unemployed if he's not careful. Oh, the Everfrost. The, the double Everfrost. Though. Oh my God. He hit him with the. You can do that. I can do that too. Yeah, but I think Yu-Gi-Oh landing that one a little bit better, not to mention the, the poke is more dangerous when it's sticking yeah. uh, from this Vigar dress code. Oh, no, there. don't do it, bro. Don't throw away it's everything you've built okay. up. Come on, man. Don't do it. Okay, no, no. He's fine. He's fine. Back, back up. Sorry. I was watching Kanatsu roll uh, up as well and watching I, the collapse, yeah. but... Um, you know, Echo, like you kind of said there, you, you can take the whole breaker off Kanatsu, but you can't take Kanatsu <laughs> off the blade. He's just gonna keep on splitting. <laughs> And hey, it's working. You're getting that lead over the Gwen right now. And Washidai has not really been able to answer the push so far. Surprisingly here, it's gotten enough pressure as well for the Hawks to look for this Herald uncontested. V3, they weren't in position. You know, they're trying to hover mid, hover bot at the same time. And that just left topside completely exposed. Yeah, and also that turret going down is just solidifying that gold lead more and more, and they might just get even more here if Kinatsu can get this kill. Dude, he's just hiding behind the crux, bro. Those are children. You can't take those at meat shields, Unica. Come on. That's got to be a war crime. <laughs> if we're calling crugs children here, I go, then is it better for Unica to hide behind them rather than killing them? Like, I don't know which is worse here. Okay, that, that's fair. The lines are blurred, man. Okay. <laughs> We're just gonna go with it, but he will get out of that one close. But like I was saying, right, just that those turrets going down from the split pushing coming up from Kinatsu, it's just solidifying that goalie. We see it right now too. It's like they're almost at a two K goalie, a little bit off there, but they're getting close to it despite being two kills down and despite the same amount of dragons being traded. It is literally the entirety of the gold lead for the Hawks right now. Is yeah, <laughs> those are those turrets here, and for Kinatsu, it's actually gonna get harder to keep split pushing at this point because you're gonna kind of expose yourself uh, as you get into a lengthened lane and again no hull breaker i'm gonna harp on it continuously <laughs> because if you're gonna play this style you probably should build the hull breaker dasher though dasher is another option to look for that split push he has now completed the Everfrost, and we saw that hey against Ugo in the long lane as well it's actually not terrible you can answer back and i think even now against washi die as well you can still hold that lane uh 1v1 and whereas for v3 Ugo can't really push out on that side lane so hmm. hawks can look for the one three one if they want to yeah definitely they are going to be looking to take out yet another turret though with the rip tail being dropped mm -hmm. gonna crash right into this tier one almost actually going down before crashing that was a close one to say the least that'll bring it incredibly mm -hmm. low i don't think that kinatsu will get a chance to take out that turret anytime soon though that one's gonna be a little too hotly contested but you see him once again right he's in that bot lane he's applying pressure yeah. but i don't know if this is the time because it's looking like it's gonna be a bit of a scuffle and right now his team will be one man down if we do see this kind of five on four take place and accordingly, Sengon Guags are going to go ahead and just, you know, get it back off. And I, I said it too now. You've, yeah. you have cursed, you've cursed me now. I, okay. Well, no, I'm done talking for today. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be uh, the, the new super team, right? <laughs> After <laughs> South Bank Hawks don't work out, they're going to merge. Yeah, they're going to merge, dude. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, for now, though, I mean, I, I, the pressure that Kanatsu is putting down is because the dragon is coming up. And I think that's the priority for both of these teams here. So. Yeah. The Hawks had priority bot side. V3 was looking for control in the mid lane. Now, Wade gets pushed up. They're going to swap. We see Kanatsu now hovering more towards that mid side, actually sneaking away the dragon. I like this. V3 did not think of this. And Washidai was just continuing pushing bot, and they see Blank. They're like, oh, the jungler's here. Surely they're not doing dragon. Yeah, yeah. well, you'd be uh, fairly mistaken. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and grab myself that second drag dash over the wall, and he's in safety, and just like that. The Hawks will find themselves yet another objective, yet more gold to funnel into their pockets. They're sitting pretty on it. They are, they're dripped out right now. They're looking good. Actually, the collector coming out second item here for Kinatsu. What is going on here? Kinatsu is building the, the damage build for, for Graves. And this build, this is when you want to kill people. Um, so despite the fact that we've only seen Kinatsu split push right now, it feels like the answer is to try and find Oh, there you go. Great oh, talk. You know, it's no! not enough. He's going to get interrupted, and now he's in the worst spot he's ever been in, and it's like, it's going to go gold, but where will you go when it's over into the ground? Because you are gone. So close, but our one and only blank is like, no, you will not be leaving today. Not alive, at least. <laughs>
Yeah, just a little short on that teleport there for ah. Ugo. Uh, it's rough to see, but really good play from the Hawks here. This is, I think, the first sign of proactivity we've seen from them here. Now, it's just talking about Kanatsu's build, wanting to find these squishies here, trying to pop the Vyga, trying to pop the Jinx here. And it's going to be critical because we just saw Ugo going down. But keep in mind, he's going to keep on scaling this Vyga infinite scaling he will soon one-shot enemies. So a lot of times it's just going to come down to how quickly can you... Who, who pulls the trigger first? How quickly can you burst down uh, mm. the carries? And that's going to make things really spicy. It's only going to get worse as the game continues to go along. This time, though, Hawks pull the trigger first. There's nothing else to pick up because they can't do Baron just yet. But still, Realm Warp should be back up by the time Dragon is once again on the table. Yeah, so it's, so, it's so crazy how quickly time has passed as well. I feel like in comparison to the game we just watched before this, everything's moving a whole a lot slower, really, with both teams <laughs> really being careful, right, that they don't want to make that kind of fatal mistake that puts them on the back foot. And, I mean, that's always good to see. And But once again, right, it's just like we were saying, the Hawks, it's never, it's never a short game with them. <laughs> No, and it's not an illusion. We are almost at the same time right now where <laughs> DFM took out Burning Core. We are approaching. Oh, we really are. 22 actually, yeah, yeah. Like 20, <laughs> oh my God, that is crazy. And this time around, not even a single tier two has fallen yet from the side of E3 and not a single tier one has fallen from the Hawks. Yeah, the Hawks defense has been uh, rather solid. They have been the aggressors in a lot of these uh, siege situations so far, but V3 has found ways of finding the isolated picks. They haven't found one in the last, I want to say, 10, probably 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, they haven't quite matched to turn anything yet. So V3, this is where I worry for them Ooh. and Heddle getting caught. Indeed, looking to find something here though, perhaps. Heddle going to have to go ahead and use that grand just to get out of there. Blank though, he's looking to send it, looking to find Where's something. The team? Doing a lot of damage here. Heddle got a dip. Yu-Gi-Oh, incredible. Ooh. They will still get a one for one and then another one here. Dasher picking up the kill on Yu-Gi-Oh. Not quite going to skip that one. We'll grab this tier one. Going to run that down. Looking to do as much damage as they can here as well. So this turret dress code, unfortunately, just a bit too low to try and contest anything. Could be taken out by the snap of someone's finger. And they just absolutely burst down that tier two. It did not stand a chance. And it no longer stands. Well, Echo, the good thing about hitting, you know, the 22, 23 minute mark is that at least when the fights happen, things really happen yeah. after that. Here we see two turrets go down in rapid succession. And... As we watch this fight here, I was worried for the Hawks because Blank goes in alone. And where is the rest of the team here? <laughs> Only Kanatsu anywhere nearby. The Realm Warp didn't actually bring in that many members. A lot of them walked their way in. But thankfully, Marvel, with that Gale Force, had enough mobility to actually go in there and finish it. If not, if they did not find that Inferno Moonlight Vigil once again, finding picks at the end of that, I don't think Blank gets out alive. And V3 might still lose the turret on the back end of that but they only lose one. Yeah, no, it's like you can literally see at the replay. It's like Blank goes in. There's just, you don't see any blue health bars yeah. anywhere, bro. It's just, it looks like he's just going in for that kind of 1v5 send. And then all of a sudden, just Marble pulls up like, hey, I got this. Sends out the Moonlight video and just picks up a nice little kill there. Overall, now the kills are even. The gold lead is uh, larger than ever, dare I say. And uh, all of a sudden, <laughs> Hawks, are they're looking, they're looking good again. They're, they've, they've definitely come back. Okay, but how long yeah, before how long the, the last? trigger again? Because right? <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like at this point, it, with most of the teams in the LJL, you know, 25 minutes, 5k gold lead, they'd be actively looking for a team fight, for a mm -hmm. pick. Whereas with the Hawks, I've been struggling to figure out their mindset. Like that mid fight, <laughs> why did they pull the trigger? It felt like there was nothing there to fight for, but they found it and it was a good fight. So if you can do that once, do it again. Realm yeah, coming in, Blank also hunting. Dude, Blank, this, he's he's just so <laughs> in fear in the mind at this point. Bro, you got to expect the unexpected. That's all what it's about. These obvious fights, no, no, no. We don't take those, man. That's too easy. You got to make these big brain plays that they don't expect and then catch them on the back foot. That's what it's all about. That's what the Hawks are doing. You, you got to chill 80% of the time. And when you send it, that's when you send it. So uh, what I'm hearing is Hawks' partnership with uh, Counter Logic Gaming when? <laughs> <laughs> Sooner than later at this point. But Kinatsu, Reina, got to be a little bit careful. Heddle was trying to pull up, but Marble and Blank are in the jungle waiting for anything to go down. Just once again, looking to get these turrets. We're not really looking for any kind of engagements here. Just going to spook them off. And overall, just, just chilling, really. 
Yeah, and once again, Kanatsu on that split push, right? Yeah. If you had Hellbreaker, maybe you take that. <laughs> you don't. It's slow, but it's still kind of working. And we are focusing a lot on what the Hawks can do because they're the ones who have been pulling the trigger for the last 10, 15 minutes. V3, what happened to that proactivity? I still remember yeah. the really good ganks from Unica and Hetel setting up, you know, for that uh, Super Mega Death Rocket coming through from Dress Code. And even if the rocket doesn't kill you, Eugeo will. Where is that now, right? You can still look for picks onto the side of SoftBank Hawks. They are not grouping up for the most part. You see Marble there? Well, that's somebody you could look to dive on, but they've kind of just sat back. And I understand that you want a UVO to farm up, but at some point, like, hey, he's got enough stacks. Use that Predator, start forcing fights. You take a Predator Vigar so that Vigar can look to initiate. Yeah, it feels like they got kind of complacent, right? It's like they get those first couple of like really good plays, really good picks that we praised them for as well because it was really nice to see, right? Especially kind of the rotations that were coming out from the bot lane. We saw, right, they we get this really nice fight in the mid lane and they're instantly back on the lane to defend. But I feel like once they kind of got that, they were like, okay, guys, you know, uh, game secured. Now we've secured the early game. We can sit back and relax. No, you cannot. Not against the Hawks. You got to just keep sending it. Honestly, it's like it's like you're saying, you're taking Predator Vigar. You you gotta go, bro. Like you, you gotta run at him. That's what your whole thing is for. Yeah, and instead, it's looking like Blank once again, oh. who's gonna try and run somebody down. Indeed, they can collapse. Be a bit of a collapse here. Unica in a bit of a bad spot. He's getting CC to all hell, yeah. and he's just deleted off the face of the earth. Goodbye, good night. Ugo was trying to make something happen. Did hit okay. him. Okay. Horizon will get one. Maybe they can channel this into something bigger here. Head on. That's it. No, he's gonna go down though. Kinatsu, incredibly though, definitely needs to be careful. Collateral damage just came out, doing a lot of damage. Marble though, he's dangerous and he's looking. He's hunting. He wants blood. Won't quite find it though it did get put into the cage was not able to gale force his way out of that one it's literally just a question of who's engaging first if the <laughs> hawks didn't engage his v3 could have won that you saw what ayuge absolutely just did to Raina could do to really anybody else on the side of hawks but because black was willing to face check a bush as a hecarim there they find <laughs> the kill they're looking for baron unica is not there so there is no smite steal availability yeah, no, indeed. Yu-Gi-Oh is going to have to try and do something. He will! What? He steals it! No universe where this should happen. And he walks off. He wants off, hits him with the one, two. <laughs> and he's out of there, bro. <laughs> he is an evil genius, bro. He actually steals it. Oh, my. Yo, if this was solo key, I'd be spam pinging this much. Yeah, let's get that. Re oh, we're not even going to get a replay of that, dude. But it, this is also interesting to look at. Yeah, I want to see a replay of the steal. This yeah. fight, we already knew what happened. It was just Blank willing to pull the trigger earlier. That's really all it was. The Realm Warp, actually, I didn't even notice, actually failed because of the stun there. So they hmm. didn't quite get out. But it's honestly better that they didn't get out because they did manage to turn the fight. <laughs> they got to poke everybody down, and this is what set up the steal. Ah, now. There we, okay. Now okay, we now, now we come for it. the steal here. And it's <laughs> disgusting that Uge did that. Like, How many stacks does he have to be able to outsmite at this point? That's crazy. Drops the event horizon. Doesn't even okay. stun blank, so he should be able to smite it. Right there. Oh, oh. my god. That is <laughs> you can't even zooming in on him. Like he just walks away from it. Like, yep. I just did that. You know how it'd be, bro. <laughs> I mean, Smite Smite does what, 900 now? So yeah. 934 was just out of range for Blank, and Ayugo oh. actually outbursts at the Smite. That is a huge problem, Echo, because now it means that the Hawks. You don't have a guaranteed <laughs> objective take anymore. Bygar can actually out damage you. Combine that with Elisin, it's going to be rough. And V3, they might be able to find the first win, maybe? Yeah, oh, maybe not quite, though. It doesn't matter if you have the Baron <laughs> if you're all dead. Because think of the children. Oh. Come on, Marble. Oh, my God. Hits him with the three, man. Then they pick up the fourth here for Kinatsu. And Yu-Yo will be the only man to live to tell the tale. And look at that. They are just rushing it. They're sending it. Kinatsu's like, this is my time to shine. It's time to push these side lanes. Going to go ahead and grab the tier two here. Going to look to move things up. I don't know if Yu-Gi-Oh can really hold this. Honestly, it's the whole five-man no. set going to drop the event horizon. Definitely going to no. buy him some time, but it doesn't matter. They're just going to run past the turret. You have nothing to protect you. You go gold, and you're about to go into the ground, and that's the ace. It, it just like that. It, it, it was all for <laughs> naught. It, 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 what, what's happening, man? What, what's happening is that Black took that personally. The yeah. fact that he, he, got really did, dude. he was not happy with that. It's like what, we just saw a Baron steal, 
And now we're seeing Hawks are stealing the base. <laughs> They're all the way in. They've got the Nexus turrets. Dress code, Washi Dai are both up. Definitely gonna try and turn this thing around, getting a lot of damage down. We're gonna go ahead and take that Sonic Wave onto Rhina. A lot of damage. Dasher uh -huh. will go down. They're gonna turn this thing around. They're not going silently into the night here. No, sir. Marvels is getting pretty damn low. Needs to be careful. Dress code, <laughs> doing so much. Dude, what is happening? What is this game? Oh my <laughs> god, everyone is falling. Marbles will go down. <laughs> Down and that's the dude no i'm done i can't cast this bro this is, I, I feel like i'm bipolar at this point oh my yeah. god <laughs> echo if it's any consolation you're not bipolar the whole game <laughs> is right now v3 steals baron and then this is where everything just goes oh so wrong for them here they're going on the push but watch for blanks blank here it's so terrifying rhino sets up perfectly for it, but it's blank diving past that into the back line that really messes them up because suddenly dress code, who was safe, the one survivor from the line of engage, gets caught, gets punished, and then from th this is just where the fiesta really starts here. Like they could have <laughs> just focused on the Nexus, but no, they wanted kills. They went for Unica, they went for Washidai. <laughs> no, like either go for Nexus or go home. And because they didn't, V3 are still in it. They're in a really bad spot, but but scaling is in their There's favor. A <laughs> there is a chance. There's and a chance. <laughs> you know what? Like if they if they can ace Hawks, maybe they can end the game. They've got yeah, the Jinx actually, and yeah, no, does a lot of damage as well. Damage to structures does scale up with AP granted at a much lower rate, but it does scale and Vigar scales infinitely. Indeed, and they also went ahead and grabbed themselves that dragon, buying themselves another five minutes before the soul comes back up here for the side of Hawks. Gonna have to, yeah, I mean, at, at this point, it's like you, <laughs> anything can honestly happen. Like, you, you you can't even, like, predict anything because we, we went from Baron being stolen to V3 being aced to V3, well, not be, oh, yeah, actually, yeah, almost being aced to acing Hawks. And so it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like... I don't know what to expect at this point. Like, we're not lying when this end of this game was definitely going to be something else. <laughs> yeah, th this was what I was hoping Hawks versus V3 would have been the first time they played. This is already much more exciting. And I'm very, 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 very happy for that. Uh, and I'm also very happy for the fact that for the side of Hawks, Marble has been really performing this game. 8, 1, and 3 on this Aphelios. And even at that last fight there, Marble was the last one to go down, was pumping out damage the entire way here. This is the V3 Marble that we saw in Academy last split that Hawks wanted to pick up. And hey, granted, the performance this game, it is against V3. But if Marble can maintain this level of play, I think this is actually a pretty high level, regardless of who you're facing. Yeah, no, he's he's looking, he's definitely looking good. We keep seeing him, right? He's always kind of. I feel like Marble has kind of become the janitor of his team. They like they send them in with the with like the Mukras and like clean up the aisle after like <laughs> they had <laughs> Rhina or like Blank just run in, get them all alone. They're like, all right, you click R real quick, would you? And <laughs> you just see like the double <laughs> kill coming up for Dasher. But overall, yeah, no, I, he's. I mean, he's playing incredibly well, and overall, we're just seeing great plays coming out from from both teams. Even V three, like seeing this i wouldn't expect them necessarily to be zero and nine right they definitely still play like especially in that early game they were showing us these really good rotations right really good kind of map control map knowledge when it comes to where you need to be and when if, if we cut v3's play in half i would agree first half they don't look like it Bottom, top, they, last half though they've not been looking so proactive so yeah. good i mean look at this play right the fact that they just give up baron completely uncontested and I, I understand if it's a conscious call saying that, hey, our inhib bot side is down. We don't want to fight this. Mm. But I think a bigger part of the problem is that they just don't have vision at all. We didn't yeah. even really see pings come down until the rocket, the the vision rocket coming through from dress code <laughs> there came out. And until that moment, it felt like they didn't even know that Baron was being done. And because you've given that Baron over, because your bot side inhibitor is down and you're only sitting on your base turrets right now, v3 now have the to fight for their lives against this push hawks just need to get one pick and they can end the game pretty much yeah absolutely it's like everything is really on a knife's edge right now and i think v3 you know and that's probably also why i feel like they they probably didn't even want to risk going like sending out trying to get vision because you know that a wild oh. blank or a while oh my god what it's like was that <laughs> Like a, a wild blank or dasher could be in any bush just waiting for you to misstep and you just get absolutely just deleted. And also so were that tier two 
uh, that tier three there say and the inhibitors will both being taken down one inhibitor comes up one inhibitor goes down right and then they're facing an even bigger problem as all the minions the minions are here they're knocking on the door they're gonna go ahead and oh, grab themselves a second all? inhibitor this it, it, it's getting it's getting close it's really all gonna come down to this fight right now v3 knows it they can't even send Heddle back to try and get some health back because Just they know turrets. it's going to happen any second now. It's getting close. The anticipation is building. Dash, let's go gold. And that's the Jinx rocket out that oh. he's going to dodge. Use your will go gold. Blank, look at it. Send it in. There comes the oh. so much damage coming out. That's two members down. They're just going to focus the Nexus. And Hawks will take the game. This time around, they learned their lesson. They're like, we're not going to just go for kills. They see it, then they grab it. Echo, we were watching the wrong purple blue guy the entire game we kept talking about Eugeo and Vigar scaling up but holy crap marble just one shot Dude. those infernums at the end there that was what I was expecting Vigar to do not Aphelios <laughs> but so much yeah, for the infinite Hulk scaling bro <laughs> yeah we're gonna have to, yeah, we're going to have to put Aphelios in there now in that category instead. Yeah, a very, very stellar performance, to say the least, coming out from him. And uh, I'm, I'm sure Middlecott's going to have something to say about it. So uh, I think maybe we throw it to a short break real quick. And then when we're back, we'll be on the desk with our boy Middlecott, and we can kind of break down what happened. Stick around. <laughs> you know for real it's like the start was super slow and like we were commenting on it as well right They're like it's so much just chill time just kind of scaling up farming we see the occasional like scuffle and like but then it's like all of a sudden we go from that to yeah we just stole your baron then you <laughs> aced us then we aced you then we got pushed back in our base and got taken out it's like <laughs> we're, we, we went from like all over the rift in like the span of just a few minutes like it was just absolute insanity <laughs> Listen, man, the, the little, they're little, they're little kids, and he just. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nuisance. I'm just gonna say, if we're talking more implications of killing crocs, we should probably start talking about more implications of killing minions. Just putting that out there. <laughs> 
<laughs> the minion activist yeah, that, that's here. what i thought middle <laughs> cut that's what i thought <laughs> Ah, oh, let's start with V3 Esports. Um, what drew my eye to V3 Esports was their early game. We touched on it uh, a little bit, you know, about how they had some really good early plays around that mid lane, around Eugeo, who looked like they were set to be the late game carry. I really like that. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't see anything else after that. And I think it was you who made the comments last time, it'll call it, that V3 just don't have experience playing in the mid game because they keep getting wiped too early. Uh, and it felt like it again. In, in this game they got to the mid game and they just did not know how to play it Ayuge was just never with the team and neither was the washidai for that matter not not ideal for v3 for the hawks very happy to see marvel pop off here because for a long time it's felt like the hawks have had a problem in the bot side the top side was okay kanatsu is being kanatsu he's just pveing handling the 1v1 perfectly fine dash has been trying to carry as hard as he can and blank has been Forcing action, not always to good results. And it always felt like they need Marble and Rhino to step up. In this game, we saw that Marble popping off and Rhino had some beautiful engages as well. Oh. Middle, I think you're muted, actually. I didn't mean to cut you off. To, to the prod overlord in the background, I think he's muted. There we go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, oh dear. well I, I, I've been making uh, I've been making some interesting points, right, guys? You you could hear me. I've said Dude, some this, really this guy interesting. Is so smart, things. bro. Like, I, how is this guy not over like on NL, NLC or like anything it's like something that? Something like that. Something like, like, I've, brain, I've got no idea. I've He's got no idea. <laughs> yeah, you're a lot nicer than me, Echo. You, I was just gonna say that if, if you know, no recording, no proof that middle Middlecon was saying anything smart. <laughs> I gotta gas my boy up. You know, I, I was actually just like moving my mouth. I was. Yes, yes, good point, middle card. Very, very good point. Yes, of course, of course. How did I did not think of that. <laughs> makes makes a lot of sense, guys. Um, I I kind of want to draw you to a specific moment. Um, in this game, um, it was the Baron still because Hawks mm -hmm. they'd crested the the early pressure that V three had been putting out. They got themselves to an advantage in that mid game. They took a very very nice, if somewhat deep fight in the jungle, where they're able to pick off a couple members. And then Yujo, honestly doing a bit of a recap impression with how good the Vega was at points, dropping mm. that W on the Baron, outsmiting the enemy jungler. But then it still ends up falling apart for them. What the hell is going on there? Well, <laughs> that's a bit of a hard question to answer because I, I think what fell apart for them there... <sighs> wasn't really what was falling apart for them throughout the entire game what fell apart for them there specifically was blank and rhino taking that personally we saw the engage come through under the <laughs> yeah. turret. it was it was epic it was beautiful and it caught everybody uh myself included as well as all of v3 apparently off guard because you've got baron buff you're pushing you're not expecting to just suddenly get collapsed on like that and mm. you could see the event horizon came out late from Ugeo a little bit wasn't uh quite in position to stop the engage but that wasn't I think the overall plaguing issue for V3 just happened to be the one that broke the, sh the the straw that broke the camel's back in this case. And I believe we may just have a replay from production. I'll have to double check that one. Yeah, looks. Uh, no, we don't have a replay, unfortunately. Well, it sucks to hear that, guys. But does mean that we can now pivot and have a chat about the other games that we uh, that we had today because. It wasn't just this one. There were previous mm -hmm. games played today. Started off the day um, with Axis versus Sengoku, a matchup that we were expecting to be Sengoku favored. And Axis drafting the Draven top lane, RMC. I feel like they might have shot themselves in the foot here, but no, no, you're disagreeing with me, aren't you? <laughs> I, get, I, I just want to say that the Draven pickup. <laughs> Y'all can duke it out. I'm, I'm not here. <laughs> like coming from the region with the best Draven player in the world, PRTT, you know, CV Law, Draven top can work. It, yeah. It actually, yeah. And I actually think Totu, you know, we saw it after Totu died once, came back yeah. to late and won it. 
But the, the problem wasn't the lane. The problem was how Totu played the rest of the game with Draven. Yeah. Draven <laughs> is a ranged character. I think somebody needs to remind Totu of that. Do not run into the middle of the enemy team <laughs> chasing a kill. If you can't get it, you can't get it. Go hit tanks instead. You're Draven. You'll be fine doing that in the mid game. Watching Totu play that. <laughs> bye bye. Oh. I'm holding. I'm holding. <laughs> built, built different, honestly. Built different. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Building guild and that definitely built different. If you want to do that, build a shield bell. But I mean, it, it was Axis. It was Axis doing doing what Axis has done, like True. Pre pretty yeah, much his whole split, throwing out something uh, a little bit funky, but it, it wasn't able to work in the end. And I think Sengoku are a, a good enough team that simply opting for a little bit of a cheese strategy, something a a little bit asymmetrical, isn't always necessarily going to be effective against them. Game number two of the day. This one hurt me personally. <laughs> Rascal Jester versus Crest Gaming Act. And after a strong performance on Wednesday, this was kind of the CGA that we knew and hated from summer. <laughs> Not really able to get much stuff done in the early game. Rascal Jester was so having an, a, a pop-off performance for... Not the first time this split uh, again. Looking really, really good on the Jinx, and they were just able to clean it up. Yeah, uh, fully agree with that. And and we, we kind of just already said, you know, Rascal Jester come into today was at fifth, just outside the three-way tie for second place. And mm -hmm. most of us kind of were saying, that, yeah, Rascal Jester's a little bit lower, had a bit of a rough first go around here. We were expecting them uh, to come back up, and now they're part of that soup, that three-way yeah. tie for third here. Um, and I think Rascal Jester's, to me, they're a team that they'll just sit there and receive you with waiting arms uh, yeah. for team fights in the late game. It's yeah. really up to the other team to try and make things happen. And I think the large part of why that didn't work for Crest Gaming was because, as you mentioned, Middlecott, they didn't have a good early game. They didn't really make anything happen. And then you're playing the team who will sit there yeah. waiting for you. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about the fact that Hawks have the longest game time. Roscoe Jesters have the second longest and not by very far. The difference is Roscoe Jesters has been winning with that yeah. game time. So they'll happily sit and scale and then just win late. Uh, and we saw it today. Uh, great performance for them. Like you mentioned, sort of getting up into that uh, fist fight for third place as yep. it stands. And then our third game of the day, our quickest game of the split. And if we're talking <laughs> yeah. about good early games, DFM, Echo, they just really showed it off here. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> There's really not much even to yeah, say. Me, but like, yeah, me just, too. Me too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like it is what it is, bro. They were they they were they had a stellar early game performance, which translated into a like we saw. I'm I'm gonna just I'm gonna be real. We saw like one good play come out from Brandon and that was flawless. Fair. when he was in the in the red side jungle, and that's really about it. It's yeah. like uh, it all went downhill from there. They had a stellar I early like game. Yeah, it translated to I, mid -mid. I, Yeah, I like that. I like that we were talking about like they had a great early game transitioning into oh, the game has ended. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, like... I thought there were. I thought there were meant to be a couple a more great steps into it. Screen. I, I, you know, like, <laughs> they, they they had a great mental early game. Um, yes, yes. The, the idea was very very good. What was it the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh was unfortunately incredibly weak. <laughs> Very true. I think that's I think that's a sort of a, a great place to leave off. I don't think we've got an updated um, graphic for the standings, but we'll just run through them very briefly at the end of the day. V3 still at the root of the table. O and 10 not looking great for them. The Hawks with that victory put themselves to 2 and 8. Keeping up the pressure on Axis, who with their loss earlier today, still only at three wins. So only one win out of dropping down into those, uh, well, out of the playoff spaces for them. Then we've got uh, the three-way top for third burning core rascal jester and cga all tied six and four sengoku with the seven and three record have built themselves a little bit of space above that pack in second place and then of course dfm undefeated 10 and 0 with sole possession of first place looking honestly unstoppable so far gents Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for taking us through those games. Shout out to Initialize and Oak who are taking us through the first two. It has been a great day of LGL and I hope to catch you on the next one.